Dude, why is Sargon a part of every recent controversy? He was the center of the slop gate thing from before, he's all over the Starfield pronouns thing, and today's topic, the body count discourse, yeah, that was Sargon too. Here's a Reddit post that went viral. I, 27 female, hate how men value me because of my body count. So I've been with 58 different men, which I know is higher than average, but I wanted to have fun and enjoy new experiences, and it's my life, so I did. But I've settled down the last year and have really been trying to find someone special to settle down with and start a family. All my friends are now either married or in relationships now, and whenever I meet a match with a man or meet one in real life, and they always ask what my body count is and I tell them, they always make a disgusted face and unmatch or ghost me. I even met one guy who I liked so much and I thought he was so sweet who told me he wasn't interested in a woman with such high mileage and ended up dumping me. I cried my eyes out for days over it. I'm more than just the men I've slept with. I have a decent job, fun hobbies and interests, and I'm still young, but I guess I'm just a hoe in most men's eyes." Sargon retweeted this story with a caption. The question we must ask young women is this. Who told you it was acceptable to have a high body count? That person has ruined your life and dating prospects. You should be angry with them and ensure future generations of women are not deceived by them as you were. And of course, this got everyone really mad. How dare you say that a woman's past choices matter when it comes to her future attractability? Of course, in the real world, a woman's past choices do matter when it comes to her future attractability. But you know what? So do a man's. Not in exactly the same way, but it's not like men are somehow untethered from the consequences of their actions. But this actually was the first line of attack from progressives. One of the common replies was, what about men's high body count? Sargon replied, since women use virgin as an insult towards men, it seems that women find a man who hasn't penetrated another woman to be pathetic and scornful. Men and women are totally different. Women view the number of women a man has slept with as a measure of the value of that man. Now, this isn't exactly right. I know many, many women who would not fuck a guy who's been with, say, 100 or 1,000 girls. But this is in the context of women using the words virgin or incel as insults. Here's the exchange being replied to. This woman says, I was single for a decent amount of time in my 20s and 30s. I had fun. Make of that what you will. Now I'm in a relationship, which started when I was 35, and we have a young daughter. We have a normal relationship. Hard times and great times. We share and often laugh about our pre-relationship shenanigans, with total honesty about all the different things we experienced. A guy replies to her, that's a funny way of saying you got ran through by Chad and Tyrone throughout your prime, and then you finally settled down with a simp who was completely unaware and oblivious of your whorish past when she became old, used up, and blown out. Jesus. The woman replied to that, well, look at that. After all this time on Twitter, I finally found the incels. Now, I'm sure you know this, but incel means involuntary celibate. It means guys who want to fuck but can't fuck because they can't find a partner. There's also an incel community with guys who are honestly pretty sad and bitter about their lot in life. And you know what? Fair enough. If you thought you were a 0 out of 10, lowest of the low male with no chance of ever getting a girl ever, that would probably be a pretty rough existence. However, there is legitimate misogyny in these communities too. Pent up resentment towards the women who find them ugly and the more successful men who actually find partners. I talked about this in my incel video years ago, but basically, the incel community is equal parts learned helplessness, legitimate helplessness, and legitimate hatred of women. A lot of these guys would actually end up a lot better off if they just finally got laid, but some of them definitely wouldn't be. Which is why the incel community has gained such a negative reputation online, and why the word incel is thrown around as an insult so commonly by women who are being judged for their sexual experiences by these guys. It's a way for them to sneakily judge their judges for their own lack of sexual experiences, while hiding it behind the veil of talking about a hate group. Here's what I mean. It was once very common for women to insult men by calling them virgins. The implication being, as Sargon said, women view the number of women that a man has slept with as a measure of value of that man. If a man's body count is zero, he's a pathetic failure and you can't attract women. I was certainly called a virgin by girls who hated me back in high school. Even after I actually got laid, they still called me that. Because they know that guys tend to be sensitive about it, especially if it comes from a girl that's out of their league. But as the world moved more progressive and sex positive, shaming people for their sexual practices became unpopular. So progressive women stopped saying virgin and started saying incel instead, masking their attack as being related to an online community with some pretty questionable beliefs. But more often than not, they're still referring to a man's lack of sexual experience. In fact, I had the opportunity to talk to one of the women attacking Sargon a little bit, a writer for the feminist rag Redux, and here's how that went. She said, This is clearly fake and written by some incel who loves fantasying about promiscuous women, aka women that sleep with other men and not them, being knocked down a peg. 
I replied to her with, here you are using sexual history to shame men through the use of the word incel. And you think it's bad to use sexual history to shame women? She replied, what's wrong with incels isn't their sexual history, it's their attitudes towards women. They're entitled, resentful, and misogynistic. Not all male virgins are incels. Okay, fair enough, but I did find several instances of her using the word virgin as an insult in the exact same way. It's not just incel subculture with you, you actually shame people for being virgins. You shame men for their sexual history. You are entirely guilty of this. You shame men for not having enough sexual experience, just as men shame you for having too much sexual experience. She said, again, it was the misogynistic attitudes towards the woman that was the problem. I replied to her, why do you default to talking about their sexual activity as your go-to insult then, rather than the actual topic at hand, their attitudes? It sounds like sexual prowess is the only unit of value you understand, which is why you insult men using it and get so offended when you're insulted with it. Yes, I was pulling the idea from that one meme that we've all seen. She basically said, paraphrasing here, that when she insults men by calling them a virgin, it's due to their lack of experience, that it's valid to point out when a man appears to not understand the mechanics of sex, and that it's likely due to their lack of personal experience. I replied, so let me get this straight, you're insulting men for not knowing anything about sex by calling them virgins, and you're claiming that this isn't about shaming men for their sexual history? She then said, yeah I know this is getting long, we're getting to the end of it. Where did I shame men in this tweet that we're talking about? It seems like I'm insulting people who don't understand sexuality is based on biological sex and not gender expression and saying they must not understand sex if they say that. I asked, and how are you insulting them specifically? She replied, by saying they clearly don't know what they're talking about. I then asked, using what terminology, which is a question she never answered. That was a bit long, but I went through the whole conversation with you because I wanted to point out what happened with her, from a logic chain perspective. Most of these people will simply block you long before the inconsistency in their argument is laid bare like this, so I really wanted to see it through. She admits that she uses virgin, and frankly probably incel too, to not only insult some men's bad attitudes or bad behaviors or bad ideas about sex, but specifically to highlight that those bad attitudes and behaviors and ideas stem from their lack of experience. Even in instances where there isn't actually any bad attitudes, behaviors, or ideas, she still uses virgin as an insult because the idea of somebody who is so uneducated about sex that they don't understand the basics is humorous to her. In other words, she is judging men based on their lack of sexual experience by calling them virgins and incels, the same way that men judge women based on their glut of sexual experience by calling them whores and sluts. I have no evidence for this claim, this is purely conjecture, based off my own intuition. But I think, if you actually were able to follow the logic chain of most people who use incel as an insult, and they didn't just block you right away for daring to question them, you'd probably arrive back at this point eventually. Incels are bad because they have bad ideas about sex and women. Those bad ideas stem from lack of experience. I am making fun of them for their lack of experience, therefore I insult men for their sexual history while complaining men insult me for mine. Another claim that came out of the Sargon thread was that women can simply lie if they think their partner cares about their sexual history. This is true, but there's two problems with this. One, if you're willing to lie to your partner, you're a low quality human. Your partner deserves better, you aren't good enough for him, and you're going to have to routinely betray him as a part of the normal course of your relationship. Two, lies need to be maintained, and either you're going to have to be an expert manipulator, or you're eventually going to slip up and the truth will come out. It might take years, but for most people, it will eventually happen. The number of people who can maintain a perfect facade for decades is very low. That's why this isn't the own you think it is. You're simply admitting you're a horrible person if you do this. Here's another issue with that Reddit post. Many people replying to Sargon said that the post was fake. No woman would ever actually say, I've been with 58 men. And you know what? Fair enough. Any woman that I know who's actually promiscuous, they tend not to keep track that exactly. She might say 60, she might say in the 50s or 60s somewhere, but to come out and say strictly 58? That doesn't usually happen. And this point gets me to the other side of the conversation. It is completely reasonable to judge people based on their past sexual experiences, man or woman. There's this idea among progressives of the atomized individual, the year zero, moment zero, blank slate everyman, where nothing in the past matters and the future isn't guaranteed, so the only thing relevant is this moment, which naturally leads to the idea that you shouldn't be judged for your past behavior. That's in the past, man, why are you bringing that up? The conservative view is that we are our past, we are a continuum with our past selves, and the present self is the culmination of everything we've ever done. The progressive view taken to its extreme leads to a lack of foresight and extreme self-indulgence. The conservative view taken to its extreme leads to an inability to grow, being constantly chained to your old mistakes. The golden mean, therefore, is understanding that you can change from past bad behaviors. They don't have to define you forever, but it takes hard work and self-transformation. And that's something you can't simply declare by fiat. Most men don't necessarily want a virginal wife or something, but they tend to want women around the same level of sexual experience that they have. 
The idealized first love is that you're both virgins and high school sweethearts or something. Most guys in their 20s who have around 5 previous partners are going to be fine with a girl who also has around 5 previous partners. There can be serious relationship problems if there's huge disparities. It doesn't mean the relationship is doomed, but it does mean you have a lot of work to do to make it work. But most people are fine with someone who's more or less on their level. And since the average body count for both men and women is somewhere in between 4 and 8, most people are going to be fine. Now, I'm not saying that having standards is a bad thing. For example, if you're a very religious person, you might want an equally religious partner. And that means you might actually want that virgin wife, or at least somebody with a low body count. But I don't think this whole body count conversation applies to people like that, and here's why. One, if a girl's got a high body count, you can generally figure it out without autistically asking about it on the first date. Picture it in your head. You've got a religious guy going out to meet with a girl for the first time. How she dresses, how she speaks, her interests, her history, they're all going to be pointers towards what sort of personal life she has. Hell, how you were introduced to her is a pointer. If you met the girl on Tinder and she shows up with a shaved side head and facial piercings and talks about going to art school, the chances of her being a virgin is very low. Not zero, of course, but I don't think you need to actually ask the body count question here. Two, this goes back to the self-transformation thing, a truly religious person with religious morals understands forgiveness. If you're a religious guy and you meet the blue sundress Wojak GF and she tells you that yes, before she came to God, she was promiscuous and she asked for forgiveness for it every day. And she's not simply lying to you, but she shows it in her actions and how she behaves in church, how she behaves with her family and her community. I find it hard pressed to believe that a religious guy who truly followed that morality would reject her. I mean, he still might, but Christianity is all about forgiving those who fall to temptation, and a true reformation goes a long way. This is ultimately the issue with the woman in this Reddit story, assuming it's a true story. The first thing is that she did what many men consider to be unattractive. If you think that that's unfair or only incels care about her or whatever, too bad. You can't shame people out of their sexual preferences. This is how it is, and no amount of dismantling the patriarchy will change it. But the real nail in the coffin is that she's unrepentant. If you think there's nothing to repent for, then there isn't. Fine. There absolutely are men out there who believe that a high body count isn't something to repent for, and she can go for them. But for some reason, she's not. She's going for men who actually just aren't compatible with her sexual history. To them, there is something to repent for, and her unrepentance is just unattractive. Merrick, being a terminally online failed crumb tuber, chimed in by saying that the story must be fake because men never ask about the body count question, and that those who do are losers. They're not worthy of a woman's time. Except in this story, again assuming it's true, the woman seems quite put out by being rejected by these apparent losers, who shouldn't be worth her time. I simply replied to her with, I'm still not going to date a woman with a considerably higher body count than me, as it's a sign that we have different moral tastes. I found a girl I match with nicely, I don't need to settle. And that's what's at the heart of the conversation. Unlike other people, I'm not going to judge women who sleep around and rack up a huge body count. I don't care. I don't hate you like some incels might, I just won't date you. You do you, and I'll do me. This is a moral conversation, and morals are at their heart, a part of your intuition. One person replied to me asking, I'm curious what moral tastes you input on your perception of somebody's character because of their body count. I replied, if you value chastity, then not being chaste is inherently of poor moral character. If you don't value chastity, then it's not. She then asked me, do you have a logical reason to value chastity, or is it just vague personal interpretations or feelings? The issue is, that is what morality is. When something appears to be good or evil to you, it's because it feels good or evil. Even if you're a consequentialist performing some sort of calculation to get to your desired end, what you desire as the end is ultimately going to come down to personal taste. Some people don't care if their partner has a massive sexual history. Other people do care quite a bit. Neither option is objectively correct, it's all a matter of personal taste. And your personal taste is not something you should tolerate being shamed for. That's what's at the bottom of this conversation. When women have too many sexual partners, some men find them unattractive as a result. Not all of them, of course, but enough that it's an identifiable trend. The problem, though, is the double standard. That feminist women bristle at the idea of being held up to their man's standard, while they hold men up to their standard. On the other side, the more red pill types of men do this too. They hold women up to the standard of chastity and virtue while they themselves sleep around. It's the same problem, but the double standard is still at play. Both of these groups, the feminist women and the red pill men, will call their targets insecure. Those slutty women are just insecure. Those incel dudes are just insecure. But our society treats male and female insecurity very differently. If a man is called insecure, it's generally meant to be derogatory, like it's his fault he can't shore up his own mental state. If a woman is called insecure, she's cast as a victim, like oh, she's traumatized or something. 
even if both of these people were cheated on, the woman's a victim, the man needs to get a grip. Our society views male insecurities as inherently unjustified, stemming from a personal fault, while women's insecurities are the fault of the men around them. It's this double standard that the whole body count conversation rests on. If male insecurity is self-defined and invalid, then all male activity as a result of the insecurity is a reason to shun the affected men until they smarten up, including them having any sort of sexual standard. If female insecurity is a result of being victimized by men, then all female activity as a result of the insecurity is justified, a self-defense mechanism to prevent further abuse, including them having any sort of sexual standard. In other words, women can have standards for men because women are victims. Men can't have standards for women because men are abusers. As a side note, go back and watch the super mega video I made with this understanding. Lex is an excellent example of what I'm talking about. Feminist women tend to excuse away all of their bad behavior as trauma responses, even if they actually haven't been traumatized, because I guess simply being a woman in 2023 is apparently traumatic enough. When the conversation becomes about body counts, that validates men's experiences and preferences, but it necessarily also must discredit the eternal trauma response narrative that feminist women employ. Even though feminism claims to be all about women's empowerment, when women become empowered agents responsible for their choices, including their sexual ones, and therefore it's not actually men's fault when men reject them, but women's fault because of the choices they made, well, that's just something that they can't allow. 